the president of risks and development okay. while okay. the convener is the professor Cotecchia, full professor of technical engineering at the Polytechnic University of Bari. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. Professor Leroy, you can start, mm -hmm. please. Okay, thank you very much. So I guess that's, uh, yes, a lot of people came back and joined the session again. Uh, that's a good pleasure. So we'll start the session uh, dedicated to long-style structure, infrastructure, interaction, and remedial measures. Uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four. We have four speakers this, uh, this morning. And uh, we are going to start with uh, uh, Yuri Kaliuk which is uh, the deputy manager of the Department of State Enterprise Research Institute of uh, Building Construction. Uh, okay, he belongs to this, uh, um, to the Research Institute of Building Construction in Kiev. And uh, I will uh, give him the floor and the presentation, the title of, of the presentation. Kaliuk is going to, to have two presentations. And the first one is yes. the, Great to see you. It's uh, first the presentation yes. is entitled Reconstruction in the Condition of Restrain Urban Development and Slope Deformation. Kaliuk, I'll give you the floor for this first presentation. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, do you see my presentation? You see? Yes, we see it. We see it. Yes, okay. I will start. Yes, you can start. I present re a report reconstructions in the conditions uh, the restrained urban developments and slope deformations from a research institute building constructions and institute of telecommunications, a global information space. Introductions. The postal square in where downtown Kiev bounded Band and Bakement Highway along the Dnipro River and Vladimirskaya descent at the foot of Vladimirskaya Hill and the Vichy Subway Tunnel Pass. The complicated geotechnical conditions at the site include the weak water saturated soils of the Dnipro River, flood plains, sediments, high green water level regulated by subway tunnels and landslides hazard slopes of Vladimirskaya Hill. The existing buildings and the subway line imposed with strict requirements to design solutions and work executions as to where preservation and ensuring. The reconstruction project envisages the constructions of bidirectional two-line road and above transport overpass the field stage of reconstruction as of this uh, underground shopping complex of about 8,000 uh, square meters total area in the second stage of constructions and the complex landscape with a park and fountain. You can see this area on these pictures. This is a plan of reconstructions. The territory engineering geological and hydrogeological conditions. According to engineering and geological survey of a postal square reconstruction site, geomorphologically belongs to the area of the Dnipro River Bank, a high abutment to a steep root slope of a Kiev plateau. In the site geological structure, the deposits of, diffu of diffuse Kharkiv, Kiev, and Buchak formations everywhere covered the upper quarterly diluvial sediments at the, uh, and present uh, up to 40 meters explored depths. Based on the results of the drilling operations and salt laboratory studies, explored depths, seven engineering geological elements were, in, were identified from the top to bottom. The construction site engineering geological conditions belong the category complex because of possibility of landslides. The study of hydrogeological conditions characterized by pressure spread aqua complex of a consist of an aqua confinement quarterly alluvial deposits, soils of Buchak formations and the topary of different type. The amplitude of groundwater level season fluctuations is one meter. So water piezometer level is recorded absolute elevations 40.6, 40.7 meters. Objects and uh, probable construction speed impact on the surrounding buildings. The underground facility is designed and taking into account the mutual influence of a project and um, 
the postal square surrounding structures buildings, which included transport, interaction facilities, and subway tunnels, as well as post office, the church of nativity, and Kiev Pastrans buildings. You can see on this figure, with, a, with uh, this is a church, this is Kiev Pastrans buildings, and so on. The post office is the closest to construction projects with a distance 3.2 meters from where it sent to enclosure boundary of a bit under the design and project and 5.6 and 9.0 meters from the our two sides of a building in a pit enclosure boundary. The surrounding development of a design and project of a postal square also includes the buildings of a church of nativity located at the 9.0 meters distance from the end to end 11 meters from the main facade of a pit. Also, there are two subway tunnels near the construction site at distance of about 16.5 and 28.0 meters from a pit enclosure. Pit enclosure structures. The enclosure of a construction pit of multifunctional object is made 1,020 millimeters diameter second piles, where enforces pile spacing in 1,480 millimeters. The pile tops are connected by ground beyond. The absolute elevations is 104.4 from the pile tops and approximately 80 meters for the pile tips. To eliminate the soil's particles, mechanical, internal erosion to uh, boreholes executions for the piles, Around the post office buildings, a protective screen of macro piles is arranged with the depths of these piles immersed at reach a layer of sand at a mark of 86 meters. The pit enclosure system contains structural elements in the form of space structure that participate in the soil's pressure perceptions and transfer to our structures of a pit enclosure. The space structure performs the temporary functions where the deconstructed during the soil excavations from a pit and frame structures and underground facility floors constructions. The load from the soil's pressure will be transferred to underground facility frame structures which must be taken into account in the wear design. The same of pit enclosure in shown on figure two. You can see this is a space grid of uh, different elements uh, for calculation scheme. The good pers uh, perspectives for modern software package use the landslide prone slopes and excavation strain, strain state modeling come out of a work analysis. Based on these results, the paper outsource carry out the facility calculations with a software package, Lira Windows from the Ukraine, applications at the stage of repeat and closure constructions is a spatial systems. The spatial calculations model for facility given on the figure three. In figure four, the nature of the elements deformations in the pit and closure calculations model is shown. You can see these deformations on this figure. The assessments of Vladimir Skyhill slope stability, uh, the determinations of repeat construction second stage impact of a subway tunnels. The calculations were performed using models of a package slide and Lira windows intended for solving the geotechnical tasks. These software package are designed to assess the strength strain state of soil mass and the static and dynamic loads, as well as to assess the slope stability of the methods of Morgenstein, Price, Bishop, Jan, Bus, Spencer, or finite element methods, assuming we have sliding surface, have a cylindrical, cylindrical shape, or a resigned like broken lines. The calculation were performed on one meter under conditions of plane deformations. For modeling the soil mass, a soil model corresponding to a Coulomb more strength conditions was adopted. At the foot of a slope where retaining walls, which have been erected during the constructions of hotel complex along Sagred Dachnov Street within the postal square boundaries, were modeled. The assessments of Vladimir Skyhill slope stability and the determinations of repeat construction second stage impact on the subway tunnels. A scheme layout of a design cross-section lines is given on this figure. 
As a result of a slope stability calculation analysis, the following conclusions made. Taking into account when slide protection structure erected in the Hill slope foot during the construction of hotel complex and along the Sagadachnava street with a postal square where slope stability coefficient values as follows. 1.44, 1.447, taking into account the piles cutting and 1.288, 1.353, with a circular cylindrical surface spacing below the pile stories. We will design cross sections one one with cross sections. And 1.355, 1.581, taking into account the pile cutting, and 1.319 with a circular cylindrical surface spacing below the pile stories. We will design cross sections two two for with cross section. Based on the performance calculations, it is possible to conclude that the stability of a slope along the Sagadachnava Street with Ritanian slide protection structures erected during a hotel complex construction and where loads as well as with subway tunnels been taken into account is ensured as minimum safety factor 1.319. You can see on this figure, which meets the requirements of Ukrainian regulations. The site of design it on the ground Structure constructions is adjacent to the subway tunnels location area. With distance from a pit and closure walls, axis is about 16 18 meters to a nearest tunnel boundary and 80 and 28 meters to a more remote tunnels. To determine the degree influence of the pit and closure arrangements for a new multifunctional facility of a subway tunnel structure, including the impact of soil excavations from a pit, to task are solved. The first task is to determine the pit and closure structure deformations during excavations. The problem is solved based on a proposed spatial model for the pit and closure systems. The second, second problem envisage the determination of the nature of the deformations distributions in the soil mass outside the pit and closure with an LOIs to subway tunnels inclusions in the, this mass. The problem is solved using the plane calculations model. To assess when the groundwater level change after the pipe foundations arrangements for the design buildings, the geotechnical models of soil mass area was built based on the results of engineering geological and hydrogeological survey before and after installation one the rover piles along the A1 axis. The initial data for calculations include the filtration coefficients of engineering and geological elements that constitute the soil mass of explored depths. The calculations model split into EG and divided into finite elements shown on this figure. In the place of future pit and closure structures installations, the groundwater level absolute elevations before arranging one row of bored cast in place piles along the A1 axis is 96.0 meters. The total head value in the depression curve of a soil mass area after installing one row of well bored cast in place pipes along the A1 axis are shown on this figure. This is a previous level of groundwater, or this is a new level of groundwater before installing pile in this place. To absolute elevations of a groundwater level in front of pit and closure structure after the installations is 99.8 meters. Info, it follows from figure nine that installing one row of the pit and closure second piles for the construction of the ground place without draining system, vertical and horizontal will raise in groundwater level in front of the structure by three meters approximately. Such a raise in groundwater level with lead to complete soaking of the soil mass around the subway tunnels with the subsequent change of physical and mechanical characteristic of soil constituting it. This will lead to the subway tunnels additional deformations. To avoid the groundwater level raising after pit and closure structure constructions, the vertical and horizontal drainage solutions for the underground space of second stage of construction was envisaged. In 2015, archaeologists discovered the well-preserved unique artifacts, a log structure and a stacket which, according to the scientists, belonged to the times of Kiev, Russia, 
of 11th, 13th centuries. You can see on this photo. The new case, the public response. When you case the public response, key ones to stop construction was on the postal square and to continue excavations. The Kiev mayor, Vitaly Klitschko, agreed to abandon the mail constructions for a while and archaeological received the green light. Conclusions. Advanced methods are used for new building constructions and existing ones protections. The pit enclosure are made of second and bored cast in place piles with use of protective screens with small diameter piles and battery solutions. The groundwater level stabilization is achieved. A temporary vertical drainage with mechanical and permanent bed draining. To ensure stability and minimal deformations of repeat enclosure during soil excavations, space structure used. Monitoring of subway tunnels deformations is carried out by means of inclinometers. Monitoring on ground water level is performed using piezometer wells. Observations of our surrounding structure is performed by instrumental, instrumental ge geodetic methods. Monitoring of subway tunnels and surrounding buildings deformations and groundwater level during constructions show it well weather with within in the limits allowed by building codes of Ukraine. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Kaliuk. I, I do hope I pronounce in a, in a good way. That's Kaliuk. Yes, so thanks for your first presentation. Very interesting. Uh, we are going to the second presentation you are supposed to do, uh, um, which is entitled uh, The Retaining Wall Collapse Prevention During the Multifunctional Complex Construction of the Flows of uh, Staronovodnitska. So, sorry, sorry, it's too difficult. <laughs> it's too difficult to pronounce. Thanks, uh, thanks for your help. But that, that's in Kiev. So, I'll give you the floor. Thanks for your first presentation. You were perfect in time. So I give you the floor. Okay. Okay. Next time, try to find very easier uh, name for pronouncing. <laughs> okay. Excuse, excuse me if I correct you. Excuse me, please. It's too difficult to pronounce. Okay. I, I give you the floor. Okay. Um, Title of my presentations was presented our convener, and I continue. Geological structure, physical and mechanical characteristics. Multi-story garage at uh, 2 to 20 Staranovodnitskaya Street in Kyiv in the buildings and structural complex for car storage, repair, movement, and administrative auxiliary purposes building as well as engineering structure in the form of retaining walls. In terms of geomorphology, the site for the designed multi-story garage is located on the right slope on the ancient Staranovodnitska airline. You can see on this figure. This is a planet uh, garage complex. The slope is located in a landslide hazard area, but during the research phase prior to constructions, the area was stabilized by First, the artificial terracing with three terrace strengthened by 1.5 meters high retaining wall slopes and angle did not exceed 20 to 30. Drainage system ranges for surface and groundwater drainage. The absolute max of a rewind slope vary within 140.5 and approximately 180 meters. The haze difference reach 38 meters approximately. The garage complex construction site is located on two level terraces. According to engineering geological survey, the geological structure up to explore a depth of 30 meters is composed of a complex of quaternary and nergen deposits represented by sands, sandy lobes, lobes, and clay covered from the surface within a filled soil layer. Garage complex design features. The complex of nice protections and retaining structures includes the cross sections 620 millimeter spiles with a 700 millimeter spacing in axis and variable lengths from <coughs> 13 meters to approximately 15 meters, depending on the terrain, made the absolute elevations of 100 
41 meters approximately and combined with each other to a single ground beam. The cross section 620 millimeters piles with a spacing of 800 millimeters in axis and variable slants from 18 to 14, depending on the terrain made at the absolute elevations of 151 meters and combined with each other into single ground beam, etc. In some axis pile, I arrange it in a checkered board order and combined with each other into ground beam along axis. Soil exciting. The intensive soil development lasted from 18 November 2003 to 1st December 2003 and after soil excavations to the absolute elevations 155.95 meters and the slice protection structure could not withstand sharing pressure and began to move in the pit directions, which has led to a soil disaster and then emergency situations in the seal structure of the slide protection structures. When the slide protection structures deformations increase almost twice, and the horizontal movement of wear walls reached approximately 800 millimeters, the soil excavation from pit was stopped. But on slide protection structures, the horizontal deformations continued to increase on 12th of December 2003, the displacement amount reached 1093 millimeters. They meant that a shear body for format and uh, that portion of the slope. It was clearly indicated by the crack of stabbing, which appeared higher on the slope and increase in time, plane, and depth. Detailed photographs of a stabbing cracks above the landslide protection structure on the slope beyond the Y axis at the 28 November 2003. On this photo, 14 December 2003, on this photo, and 21 December 2003, on this photo. The left and right winds of upper tire retaining walls receive significant horizontal displacements from 1000 to 1200 millimeters and more, which case for reinforced concrete ground beams destructions by vertical cracks with the width up to five centimeters due to retaining walls continuous horizontal movement and the emergency situations occurrence. The deformations bending under sharing pressure action on a garage complex fence piles ground beams along the Y axis on 31, 39 axis shown below. You can see situations on the 20 8th of November 2003, with photo 17 February 2004, with photo 13 December 2004. The results obtained while engineering geodetic observations of wind structure moment along the Y axis in the performing period from 23 <coughs> February 2003 to 20. September 2004 indicated the following. By mid-December 2003, the ground beam minimum, uh, maximum movement along the Y axis at, at the intersection with seven axis exceed 1,000 millimeters approximately. And its development rate reached from three to five centimeters per day. In figure four, with the horizontal movement of ground beam top along the Y axis in a period from 23 February 2003 to 20 September 2004, shown according to engineering geodetic observations in the 31 37 axis. The similar results received from 1 to 30 axis. You can see growth of with deformations, geodetic marks for different axes in this area. In figure 5, the diagram retaining structure ground beam movement velocity along the Y axis in a period from 17 July 2003 to 25 November 2003. This is a velocity of uh, these deformations. On the figure six, a diagram of a retaining structure ground beam velocity <coughs> on the Y axis during period, next period from 4 January 2004 to 20 September 2004, 
you can see on this. You can see that the deformations in the end of 2004 year will, de will be moved to zero before some uh, measures which will be conducted uh, to, for this uh, building site. The ground being the result of deformations during the reporting period constantly increased and had the maximum 1,350 millimeters for seven axes and 1,750 millimeters for 36 axes. Before the deformations could lead to large soil excitement and deformations of building structure located above buildings of a multi story urban development. The level of ground beam and horizontal displacements indicate that the structure retaining the pit in Y axis did not operate as well as like protection structure. As a result of shear body was formed in 5 to 12 axis, which was clearly indicated with stabbing cracks appearing high on the slope beyond the Y axis. Moreover, the thought cracks with opening widths up to six centimeters emerged in the ground beam along the Y 35, 37 axis. You can see with cracks on the photo, on this place. Adult and priority structure measures to save and correct to the situations created as well as to perform the design documentations, comprehensive analysis and audit the existing structure, visual inspections and mathematical modeling for the stress strength state of slopes and garage complex civil structure, we can of principles of science protection structure restrain turbine conditions were applied to determine the slope stability of this undercut for this performance. The slope stability was assessed using the more in price infinity methods we say assumption to slide surface and circular cylindrical shape of ways in the form of broken lines. Calculations was carried out in the ways. Prior the slides protection structure. The second phase arrangements and the repeat opening to the design marks. This phase was divided into calculation steps which allowed to analyze the soil mass strength state in time. The third phase was stability assessment so with slow portion with were former stress strain state which was obtained in the calculation result in the second phase. The limit conditions of a geotechnical model were as follows. Horizontal movements were prohibited along the scheme right border. Horizontal and vertical movements were prohibited along the left and lower borders. The calculation schemes for phase one, two, and three shown on this figure. You see inclined anchors and new piles row on this picture. picture. Argon stabilization measures. The retaining wall strengthening along eager axis by ranging the inclined soil anchors via multi spain metal beam. Second, the inclusion the retaining wall pass rows into the joint operations along the Y axis by connecting them by the reinforced concrete beams and creating a frame structure with would ensure where joint operations. So the walls rigid increasing the Y axis by means with tire spreaders in the form of reinforced concrete beams and thus creating a special retaining structure with stability of which would increase in the subsequent construction phase. Four, Soil backfields in the pit near the fence walls in the Y2 ash 1 to 10 axis. The slopes cutting the Y axis beyond 5 to 12 axis. Six, the new retaining walls designed in construction along the Y1 axis in the 31 4 axis. The wall constitute, constituted of following seal structures. One 20 meter slope foundations row of CFA piles with cross sections. 820 millimeters and 1,100 millimeters axis painted along the Y1 to 31, 39 axis. Two row 
two pile rows of CFA piles with cross sections 820 millimeters and wine thousands to hundred, 100 millimeters axis painting with two thousands five hundred millimeters, millimeters distance between the axis and the plane along the axis Y1 to 90, 39 to 40 axis. The pile were connected by ground beam with similar hoses concrete slab with a cross sections 3,350 millimeters multiply 1,000 millimeters. Reinforced concrete wall with 4,500 millimeters height with 600 millimeters six buttresses was made on a slave ground beam. Measures one to four were carried out as temporary ones and to use only in the process of piles and pile ground beams regions in the Y axis. Calculation retaining structure with soil anchors. Verifications of all structural stabilization measures with soil anchors is performed by using Ukrainian Lira window software based on computer model of a pile row portion Y axis on the base of finite element approximations of loss line protection and training structure. Loss and effects of evacuation model elements are follows. Loss due to effective sharing pressure are determined in accordance with stability calculations and vary along the pile length. The unit depending. So the loss pres present during the ensure tensions were specified under the approximate angle in the spreading beams nodes at the ensure installations points. In the calculations model, the tension value of 60 tons was taken. The maximum value of horizontal deformations at the pile's nose is approximately two centimeters. In the figure 10, the calculations model deformations have projections of x, y, z plane is shown. You can see on these figures. The most probable sliding surface and stability coefficients value for these low portions are shown on these figures 11 and 12. This is a slide surface under, under cross, sec, uh, cross the piles. Uh, this is a sliding surface, not uh, cross the piles. The result of soft stability calculations when installing anchors. The engineering geological structure, types of engineering of geological layers, where capacity and physical properties under each of the conditional areas of calculation schemes, the state density additions available based soil deformations along the conditional foundation vertical axis is determined. And the main of a layer by layer summations of the full and elastic settlements of foundations are obtained with the without taking into account the minimum influence. Foundation system were introduced. Conclusions. A complex three-dimensional computer model of the buildings is developed. It consists of two substructures operating in a uniform automatic model and combined of a level of contact with the base. Carry out numerical studies show the additional structure along the Y axis of a top of a pile row of soil anchors with 60 tons working tensions can stop every increase in slope soil deformations with its stability coefficients 1.3, 1.354. 1 3. To stabilize the structure retaining slopes along Y axis in where 1 to 12 axis, the following works were performed. The retaining was strengthening along Y axis by insulating the beams. To the retaining wall pile rolls inclusions into joint operations along the Y axis to where integrations by connected elements in the ground beam level. The wall reaches in the axis is the soil backfill in the 
y to h1 beyond the y axis in the 5 to 12 axis. Recommendations for revisions of multi-story garage structural scheme general concepts. The decisions was made to revise general concepts of a multi-story According to it, the load bearing structure be held by loading bearing elements of a building's frame to form of united rigid three-dimensional system. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Kayuk, for your two interesting presentation. We are a bit late, so we are going to move forward for the next speaker. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Voskan uh, Jovicic, which is uh, associate professor at the University of Ljubljana. Uh, uh, Voskan Jovicic, how you how you here? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, okay. But I uh, pre-recorded uh, my uh, presentation, so I will ask uh, organizer just to put it. I did it very well on for 15 minutes, and I don't think I will repeat that much under pressure. So let's let's okay. have video. Okay. Uh, yes, of course. Thank you very much. Your presentation is going to deal with construction of tunnel portal structure within the active landslide body. So uh, I let you the floor for the presentation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will show you in this short presentation and the content of the paper, which is called uh, uh, Construction of Tunnel Portal Structures Within the Active Landslide Bodies. The paper has been developed by me, my colleagues from IRGO Institute for, for Mining, Geotechnology and Environment based in Ljubljana, Slovenia. So in the next uh, 15 minutes or so, I will uh, give a short introduction to the problem and I will relate the talk to the two case examples explaining the general geological and hydrogeological conditions and also the design solutions. I will pose the problem, define the concepts and guidelines, and then I will show how it works on the two examples. One is the northern portal of Tunnel Petra and the other ones are the portal cuts at Tunnel Richitze. And finally, I will draw some summary and conclusions. So those two case examples uh, are used to develop a set of recommendations for the design and conditions of the interplay of landslide mechanism and tunnel portal excavation. The examples are given for two motorway uh, tunnels, uh, Petru and Ricice, which are located at the corridor 5C that connects uh, Hungary from starting in Budapest through Croatia and then through Bosnia and Herzegovina to the capital Sarajevo, all the way down to the Adriatic coast and the port of Ploče. So these tunnels are located where this uh, red arrow is. And this is the section between Ploče and Donja Gračanica. This uh, design approach highlights the need to isolate the governing factors when we face this problem. And these are, of course, geological and hydrogeological conditions. But we need to learn uh, also the, the, the design issue is essentially a 3D problem. And it has to be developed by considering geomorpholo geomorphology of the terrain, 3D geological sequence, and also spatial placement of the landslide body relative to the tunnel route. So this is completely 3D problem and has to be posed and resolved as a 3D problem. Um, more words about the case histories, or case examples. So tunnels which it's same patches are twin typical motorway tunnels with some 90 square meters of the excavation clearance profile. The rock massive through which the tunnels are driven is made of sediments of the subgroup of Jurassic Cretaceous Age and Oligomyocene uh, polyfacial complex. Um, it was relatively straightforward to excavate the tunnels within this soft rock using new Austrian tunneling method. And there are some difficulties, but not the, the, the critical ones. But the portal structures were significantly more difficult to construct. There are several landslides were developed uh, within the livium and colluvium materials, which are underlain by the weather rock. So 
What we see on the figure on the left is that the, the, the tunnel structures are usually started, the excavation started with the temporary portal cuts, and then we have cut and cover structure that is extending and then embankment put on. Uh, but in this case, that was that was not possible uh, because uh, when we have active landslide body, the final portal structure needs to be constructed first to enable remediation of the landslide and enable the underground excavation of the tunnel. And th this is what I'm going to show in the next two case examples. But first, I will give you some uh, more introduction into the geological sequence. So what we see here is the geological mapping of the face of the tunnel excavation when we are slightly deeper and material is non-weathered so that we can actually see how it looks like. It's a typical flish uh, uh, corrugated zone materials uh, in, and it's strongly, strongly tectonized. And then oligomyosin polyfacial complex is found on the top of it, usually at different degrees of weathering. And these materials mainly correspond to clay, sandy and marley sediments. Quaternary deposits correspond to the alluvium cover, alluvial, colluvial superficial power. So that was actually fallen off from the from the tops of the of the mountain and then moved by uh, by water, and and these uh, uh, fine grain deposits uh, have variable thickness of up to 10 meters. Uh, Quaternary deposits are in turn underlain by non-weathered oligomyosin, which is uh, of low permeability and essentially act as an aquitard. And for this reason, we have a lot of water on the surface. We have waterways and shallow underground waterways, and that, that leads to abundance of landslining processes. So in terms of geological and uh, uh, Geomechanical parameters, we are talking about uh, fully saturated clays, but usually under suction of medium plasticity. And the good uh, situation in all these uh, geological sequences is that they are relatively compact. They have high index of consistency, almost close to one. And uh, what I learned from, from this geology is that we were able to distinguish between different strata on the basis of their moisture content. So we saw that in diluvian clays, we have 20 to 26 percent of the moisture content, up to 30 to 35 percent in colluvian clays, and lower than 20 percent in oligomyosin complex. So due to high degree of silt and sand particles, we had relatively high degrees of angle of friction for these materials and ranging from 25 to 30 to 30 degrees. So all in all, uh, so this was the relatively competent material in terms of soil mechanics and, and almost uh, not classified as a weak rock due to, due to its characteristics in terms of rock mechanics. So what are the design concepts and guidelines for this situation when you have to do the tunnel uh, through the landslide body? So first we need to pose the problem and the, the problem arises from the situation that the general special positioning of the routes for major traffic infrastructure uh, uh, is never determined based on geological condition. These are mostly socio-economic factors and good connectivity between places, industrial and development. So these routes are often fixed and cannot be moved and alternated to avoid difficult ground conditions, including the landslide. And in, in my opinion, this is essentially the, the, the key reason why we have to develop uh, the motorway, contemporary motorway connections or railway connections in, in difficult geology, because the, all the other space was already used and the humans didn't build anything on these places just exactly because the geology was difficult. So we are the generation who has to do that for the first time. Uh, so what we need to do in terms of uh, portal cuts is we need to excavate them first to start the, the underground excavation of the tunnel. And that typical height is not small. It's, town, it's there between 20 to 25 meter uh, cut and they can severely uh, trigger or damage the, the existing landslide. So we have to be very careful where we actually uh, do them. So to define the, the correct position, the very useful concept is the complex of influence lines. And they define the, um, the position of the existing landslide where you can do some activity without actually undermining the factor of safety. 
and we use this concept to develop the proper uh, locations for these porta cuts. And how that worked in practice, I will show you next. So we have this situation of the landslide of the northern portal of Tunnel Petri. What we can see uh, is the uh, original solution that was developed without actually uh, taking into account the landslides. So this was the layout of the motorway. The cut was uh, predicted to be some, some 50 meters high, and obviously that will trigger this landslide. It will be a huge detrimental effect on the layout of the motorway because we will have to do uh, remediation of the landslide, and that was obviously not within the budget of the, of the motorway construction. So what we had to do is to do the first measure was to lower the height of the, of the, height of the pre-cut, which means that we had to elongate the tubes, and the left tube was elongated to some 100, the right tube was elongated to some 120 meters, and the left for, so for some 90 meters. So we, we move out from the main, main landslide body. And then, <clears throat> once we done that, then it was possible to install corrective structures and their toe and the side positions. And uh, the, the reason to do that was twofold. The first one was to stabilize that area of the landslide, and the second one was to enable the construction of the tunnel. So the position of corrective structure was chosen relative to the bearing geological strata, providing the fixity for the piles. We usually use pile walls to, to do these structures, uh, the corrective structures. And also the orientation, the depth, and the direction of sliding of the landslide relative to the tunnel lay layout using the concept of uh, uh, influence lines. So we, we see the solution here. So these are the elongated, this was the original position of the pre-cut. So this was the elongation of one tunnel tube. This was the elongation of another tunnel tube. And we had to use six short pile walls shown here in, uh, in plane. And first we develop right tube pile wall and left tube pile wall, which enable us to do the, the platforms for the, for the main structures. This is a right side pile wall, including the center pile and cut and cover uh, gallery structure that was used to enter the excavation of the tunnel. And it's much more plastic presented in, in 3D. So right tube pile wall enabled the construction of the main central pile wall and then another one led to power wall to stop the, the sliding in this direction so that we can do the cut and cover structure. And then after that, uh, all corrective geotechnical structures, which are mainly pile walls and this uh, gallery here, we were able to start the tunnel excavation. Generally, for this purpose, 70 piles of 1.2 meter diameter spacing um, of one point. Uh, to, to three meters were used to an average length of 20 meters. The total length of the pile walls was some 160 meters and the drainage system that we uh, used to install was some 225 meters. So what we achieved here is uh, that we had permanent structures that are built at the port a cut and within the landslide body, which we able to, to stabilize by this. And then we also enable the excavation of the tunnel, They're actually triggering the position of the landslides that are given in this light pink color here to get orientated. The same logic we used for the northern portal cut of Tunnel Ricice. So again, here the original design was to do the excavation of the cut some 50 meter deep and uh, uh, within also the landslide body, but this landslide was, was much longer. It was a kilometer scale and it was beyond the scope of our design to stabilize it, it's too expensive. We just had to provide the position of the excavation of the tunnel, not to trigger any of the, of the mechanism. So to do this, we use the same logic. We moved out from this position here of the deep cut by elongating the tunnel tubes and using the galleries. Uh, the, the cut and cover galleries. And here it's the way it looks. Uh, so what we can see here is uh, uh, the, the pile walls which are built first, the top slab, the bottom slab. And the first, it was the top slab that was constructed. And then the excavation of the tunnel was carried out using a top down uh, uh, system of construction. So beneath the slab. And after that, uh, the bottom slab was uh, 
constructed and within the the gallery uh, the tunnel the tunnel itself we can see from the this slide here from this photography here how it looked like in praxis so what are the benefits of this approach so the first benefit was to protect excavation of the tunnel through difficult ground condition and shallow depths. The second benefit was to use gallery to enable the passage of, of tunnel tubes through the unstable weather saturated layers of diluvium and decomposed rock mass that wouldn't be possible. And the third one, it's not less, less important benefit, was to use the drainage system of the gallery to redirect the water and drain the slopes and thus aid the overall slope stability. So finally, I would like to do some conclusions. 3D models of the terrain and geology should be developed as the micro location of the portal cut needs to be specially placed relative to the landslide body. The concept of the influence and neutral lines can be used to introduce the optimal location of the portal cut. The relocation of the portal cut can be achieved by elongating the tunnel of the original layout to avoid clash with the main body of the landslides. So, when passing through the landslide body, the elongation of the tunnel can be effectively protected by using cut and cover gallery that we just show for the tunnel richice. And once the position of the portal cuts is appropriately determined, then we can use other geotechnical structures such as pile walls usually to provide the permanent functionality and maintenance of the tunnel portal areas in the long term. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Dovicic, for your very, very uh, interesting presentation. Uh, I'm sure we will have a question uh, later. So I'm very pleased to introduce the next speaker, my friend Luciano Piccarelli. Uh, Luciano is full professor of uh, <coughs> geomechanics and he's uh, on soil mechanics, sorry. And he is, which is very interesting for me, the chair of the Joint Technical Committee on Natural Slope and Landslide of the Federation of International Geoengineering Society. So, Luciano, very pleased to, to introduce you. I will give you the floor for the next presentation. And the, your presentation is entitled um, <clears throat> Experience about the Landslide Channel Interaction in Textonized Clay Shells. So, Luciano, please. I give you the floor. Did you hear me? The channel, are you ready? Yes, bonjour, bonjour, Eric. <laughs> Hello, pleased to see you. Ciao, Federica. Good morning to all attendees. My paper concerned our experience about landslide tunnel interaction. Lu Luciano, we don't see. No, we don't. I, we, we don't see your presentation. We see you, which is great. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I don't understand what is happening because yes, I cannot <laughs> share you, my screen. You can't. Okay. Did you see the bottom? Yes. Okay. Uh, eventually, have you sent? Um, try oh, now, please. Try now, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alessandra, could you help? <laughs> I don't understand what is happening. Uh, I will I will try with the, another uh, computer. Okay. Uh, or may, maybe you could you could send your presentation to Alessandra and she could uh, share the. Alessandra, what what could be the possibility? Yes, you can send it to us and we can uh, we can share it for you. I suppose that Luciano prefers to yes to to manage to change the, the yes the sequence. order probably to change the order okay maybe we we can move to the next speaker yeah it will be 
easier. So we are going to, I'm going to introduce the next speaker. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Vito. Next speaker is, next speaker is Luciano. Okay, you're ready. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Okay, Luciano, I give I give you the floor. Okay, thank you, thank you. Bonjour, bonjour, uh, Eric. Uh, good morning to all attendees. Sorry for this delay. Uh, this uh, presentation concerns our experience about landslide tunnel interaction tectonite glaciers. These materials are widespread all along the uh, Italian Apennines, where a number of small villages rise. And this determines, uh, due to the poor mechanical properties of these materials, a large number of slow and huge uh, landslides take place in this area, causing damage to the infrastructure that serves uh, these small communities, with consequences in terms of costs for maintenance and so on. But, Landslide can interact also with uh, important infrastructure of national interest, such as railways, highways that connect the northern part and the southern part of the peninsula and the western and eastern coast. Um, the interaction between slow moving landslides and lifelines is quite a complex problem which depends on a number of factors, including some geometrical factors, such as the depth of uh, the lifeline with respect to the landslide body and the alignment of the lifeline with respect to the direction of slope movement. In order to give a look to this problem, we have made some very simple calculations using uh, the simple case of the infinite slope. In this case, we have a, 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 an infinite slope consisting of a high lower consolidated clay, whose properties are reported in the little table in this uh, figure. And uh, the groundwater is located at the ground surface whose slope angle is 10 degrees. The slip surface of the landslide is 22 meters from the ground surface. The flow is parallel to the ground surface and the safety factor is equal to one. I will notice the fact that all data we have used in this simple analysis are inspired by uh, case histories that I will discuss a little bit later on. In order to analyze the influence of the depth of the tunnel from the ground surface, we have investigated four cases. The first one is the case of a tunnel, which is located within the landslide body, with its bottom two meters above the slip surface. The second one is a tunnel, which is intercepted by the slip surface. The third and the fourth one are two cases of tunnels which are located below the slip surface with bottom respectively two meters and 15 meters from the ground surface. The interaction between the landslide and the tunnel has been investigated by applying, by imposing uniform displacement along a vertical section in the landslide body, 45 meters far upslope from the tunnel axis, uh, th these displacements are equal to 15 centimeters. Um, some results are reported in the following figure. In this figure, we have reported the displacements which are induced all around the tunnel and also the plastic zones which are induced by the displacements. The figure clearly shows that uh, the most severe cases are the first one, the first and the second one, uh, in which plastic zones form around the tunnel, indicated sort of passive state of stress, and the uh, displacement around the tunnel present a significant vertical component. What is interesting to notice is that some interaction takes place also in the cases three and four, in which the tunnel is located below the surface, and this because some shear stresses are transferred from the landslide body to the soil below, 
through the slip surface. Further data are shown in this figure, which compares the, uh, the shape of the tunnel just after construction. I should add here that the tunnel construction has been simulated by removing the elements of the mesh and simultaneously uh, constructing a lining having a thickness of 80 centimeters. The initial condition is indicated with the dotted black line. The uh, effect of this tunneling are shown with the blue line. We can remark that the, the tunneling itself determine a deformation of the lining, so with the, the development of bending moments and shear stresses within the tunnel. The effect of the displacements are indicated with the red line. In the first case, we can notice that the tunnel has been subjected to some downslope displacement, which doesn't take place in the other four cases. Finally, this last figure reports the effects of uh, the movement on the uh, stresses within in the lining. In this figure is reported the ratio between the maximum bending moment after displacement has been imposed with the maximum bending moment after tunneling. This is shown with the gray rectangles. With uh, uh, red rectangles is reported the maximum shear. And so again, we can notice that the worst condition is the second one in which the tunnel behaves as sort of retaining structure with respect to the length light. What is interesting is that even in the cases three and four, some increase of the bending moment and some increase of the shear has been obtained for the tunnel. And this is due to the interaction which is induced by the transfer of shear stresses from the slip surface to solid below. Another interesting point is that in the case one, the situation is uh, more se severe than in the cases three and four, but not more, more than that. And this because the major, major effect of the displacement is carrying downslope the tunnel from the east, its initial position. And now it is time to move to the experience we have collected with our real cases. This is the case of a double one-way tunnels uh, flanked, which are part of the highways that connect the southern to the northern part of the peninsula. Uh, this tunnel, since the, in, the southern entrance, cross a large landslide having a depth up to 60 meters. In order to examine the situation during the construction works, a number of inclinometers were, were installed, and the position of the inclinometers is indicated in the small figure, indicated in the plan with the landslide and the couple of tunnel. The cross section shows the landslide, which is quite deep. It reaches a maximum depth of 60 meters from the ground surface, and it is characterized by more slip surfaces. And this indicates the, a complex mechanism of slope deformation, which probably has been characterized by different reactivation in different time in the past. Just to give an indication of the effect of the movement, which are very slow, here I reported some inclinometer readings, upslope and downslope of the couple of the tunnel. So we can first observe the thickness of the landslide, the landslide body, then the fact that more slip surfaces are present. And in these cases, the couple of tunnels are within the landslide body, but in many cases, in, along the, the different sections that we have examined, they intercept a slip surface. This is an interesting figure that shows the mean rate of movement measured at different kilometers is stored upslope and downslope from the tunnels in two time intervals. In the time interval 2010-2011, I mean during the construction works, 
And in the time interval 2012-2015, after the tunnel, the, the, the works, the tunneling works, the figures provide a significant information. The fact that during tunneling, the displacement rate is much higher than after tunneling. And this indicates that the displacements we have measured are strongly influenced by the deformation, the local deformations due to the tunneling construction works. Another interesting point is that after construction of the tunnel, the displacement rate is almost constant, varying between one and two millimeters per month. This indicates that the effect of tunneling uh, now are not more existing. And the fact that the tunneling works play an important role is also demonstrated by the fact that the red line that connects all data concerning the period during the tunneling works presents an asymptote that is not far from the average value measured after the tunneling works. This is another figure that shows the displacements induced by the landslide. This shows Two flanked tunnel, the two flanked tunnels, and the measurements naturally has been uh, carried out within the tunnels by topographic tools. And the first remark that can be made is the fact that the displacements measured at four points along the lining are not axisymmetric, as we can expect, and this is due to the fact that the landslide plays, plays the major role. The movements are downslope, indicating that the, tunnels, the two tunnels are moving downslope. Uh, another very interesting point, in my opinion, is the fact that the two tunnels present different displacements, and the higher displacements have been measured in the upslope tunnel, as, as this tunnel is playing sort of shield effect. It is, it is protecting the downslope tunnel from the movement induced by the landslide. The downslope figure reports the uh, displacement history of the two tunnels and of the landslides at the same depth by using the data provided by the, an inclinometer located uh, near to the couple of tunnels and these are the me measurement made at the same depth as the couple of tunnels, depth of 52 meters from the ground surface. In order to check if uh, a shield effect is present, we have repeated the calculations made before, but in this case, we have examined the behavior of a couple of tunnels, which intercept the slip surface. And we have reported the data in this, some, some data in this figure with the displacements of the soil around the two tunnels, with the plastic zones around the tunnels. And in the little figure on the right side, we have reported the uh, ratio between the horizontal and vertical component of displacements of the two tunnels, the upslope, the, the, the values measured upslope divided by the values measured downslope and with the blue and gray rectangles, the ratio between the maximum bending moment, blue rectangle, in the upslope tunnel with respect to downslope tunnel and the maximum shear with the gray rectangle. Again, we can notice the shear effect. In fact, the maximum bending moment is 70% higher in the upslope tunnel than in the downslope tunnel, and so the, sh the maximum shear. I know that I am very close to the end, so I will show very rapidly this last figure, which reports some interesting points also. We have the displacement vectors measured at two kilometers, one located upslope of the couple of the tunnels, and the other one located downslope. Of, uh, from the couple of uh, tunnels. And it is interesting to notice that at a given moment, the ve displacement vector direction changes. And this, it is strongly influenced by the presence of the tunnels. In fact, in this figure, we have also reported the different stages of tunneling 
with Roman notation, one, two, three, and up to seven or up to eight. And we can notice that the change in the direction of displacement occurs when the tunneling works are reaching the nearest point to the position of the inclinometer. So these are uh, some interesting remarks made during tunneling and after tunneling. And they demonstrate that uh, tunnels may hide many secrets and leaving with the slow slope movements is possible with some consequences that I have not shown because of lack of time. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Luciano, for your very interesting presentation. Uh, we are going to move forward, but before maybe two things, I would like to uh, to tell to remember to the audience that uh, Professor uh, Ergun will uh, attend the discussion, so uh, he, he will be here for the question uh, at the uh, discussion time. I would like as well to to ask for the different speakers to read the question. Uh, especially to Professor uh, Jovicic, there is a question from Nuncio. So maybe you can read uh, the question before the, the next uh, uh, discussion time. Okay, I would like to move forward to the next speaker, uh, who is uh, Vito Tagarelli from the uh, Polytechnic University of Bari. Uh, you are going to have two presentations. So yes. I'll, I'll give you the, the floor for the first presentation. And uh, we are a bit late, but uh, OK, take the time very much. for this. OK, Vito, Tigarelli, I give you the floor. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, let me thank the scientific and the organization committees of the symposium for giving me this opportunity. Today, I'm here to talk to you about the hydromechanical numerical modeling of the drainage trench system adopted to mitigate weather-induced deep and slow landslides reactivations in turbidity clay slows, slopes. This study is part of a long-lasting research activity carried out by the group of the geotechnical engineer here at the Technical University of Bari. The pilot region which we have been working on is the southern, southeastern Apennines, where the tectonic action has caused material to be widely disturbed. In particular, the clay materials are of high plasticity and as such, those results to be intrinsically weak. Moreover, the tectonic action has caused the material to be fissured, which further decreases the shear strength parameters of such materials. In this scenario, we have hypothesized the eligibility of drainage trend systems as landslide mitigation measures in order to reduce permanently high hydraulic heads present in the slope which represent a predisposing landslide path. Since we have checked the efficiency of drainage intervention through hydromechanical modeling, I will first review how, using coupled hydromechanical model, modeling, I could simulate the slope response to weather and, there, and therefore to the soil vegetation atmosphere interaction. And then I will show the effect of drainage trench system within the same modeling. Prior to this, some field evidences of weather-induced landslide uh, are briefly reported. The Pichola landslide is here reported as an example of several landslides which could benefit from this mitigation measure. The Pichola case study is a deep and slow multiple rototranslational landslide. Such mechanism damages some infrastructure at the top, among which the most relevant is a barrier duct product pipeline of two meters of diameter. Also, a national road and the railways cross the landslide toe. Here is shown the geomorphological map with in red the rototranslational multiple landslides of reference, which are the most active. In the section, the inclinometer at the toe shows very clearly a shear band at 19 meter depth. In this plot, the current activity of the Pichola mechanism is reported. In particular, the piezometric heads in the slope fluctuate showing maximum value in the late winter early spring period, which is then concurrent with the peaks in the 180 day cumulative rainfall and in turn with the acceleration of the landslide movements, which have, which have been measured by uh, a GPS sensor and along the shear band. This provide evident, provides evidence of the current activity of these pre-existing landslides. 
With the aim to model numerically such slope vegetation atmosphere interaction, which triggers the current activity of the P shallow mechanism, the theoretical and the computational scheme reported by Elie and co authors has been taken as reference, in particular as regards the hydromechanical model. In such modeling, the hydraulic balance equation is simultaneously solved together with the equilibrium and compatibility equations. In the same numerical iteration, then the elastoplastic constitutive law is, is used to compute the strain tensor and by integration the displacement one. Fully coupled hydromechanical numerical analysis of the Pichelo slope have been performed by adopting a simple constitutive model, more Coulomb, and using the single stress variable strategy for the partially saturated state. In particular, the Bishop key parameter parameter has been, has been calibrated based upon a laboratory test conducted by Credone and in the framework described by Caffaro and Cotec. It is worth mentioning that the modeling has implemented the real stratigraphy of the slope and moreover also the pre-existing pre shear band has been implemented. The soil vegetation atmosphere interaction has been implemented as forcing action by using the net daily rainfall resulting from the differences in daily fluxes between the total rainfall and the evapotranspiration flux. 10 identical years of weather have been applied prior to the application of real weather condition of the years from 2007 to 2012. The evapotranspiration has been pre-processed by using the Fauper momentum method in its dual crop coefficient version by computing as first the reference of evapotranspiration, then by considering the plant-specific condition, and finally by accounting for the water stress condition. We obtain good results in modeling the piezometric heads in time at different depths. Correspondingly, here you can see horizontal velocities and displacement along the pre-existing shear band. This is just a zoom of the comparison between modeled and monitored velocity. Considering the limitation of the constitutive model, adopted, uh, which is more Coulomb, the comparison is successful. Now, recently, deep drainage trench system have been investigated as a potential mitigation measure for slope where high piezometric heads represent a predisposing landslide factor. This strategy appears to be promising, especially in the case of sliding body at marginal stability condition. However, the efficiency of a drainage trench system and correspondingly their design are often hard to quantify because of the high level computational process that needs to be undertaken since it has to include, in principle, several parameters describing the saturated, partially saturated hydromechanical behavior of the material. As such, the determination of the efficiency of a drainage system represents still an open issue in the engineering practice, since these issues related to, relates to the transient hydromechanical boundary value problem. Very often, in fact, the design of such mitigation measures has been pursued by using design charts determined under simplified hypothesis. Drainage trench, trenches have been generally considered functional to mitigate uh, only shallow lens lighting. In particular, Hutchinson discussed the piezometric head reduction that can be achieved just below the trench, the bottom trench, when installing surficial longitudinal trenches. And Desideri and Rampello reported that the effect of the drainage trench system on the piezometric condition at a depth larger than twice of the uh, trench depth have been always considered negligible. The effect of shallow depth of shallow trenches, though, have been in the past uh, literature always simulated through a numerical framework using the concept of the conceptual model by Stanich. First, it assumes longitudinal trenches as we are doing, but since it assumes shallow trenches and shallow depth where simulate the efficiency, it assumes the boundary of the problem to be very far, almost at an infinite distance with respect to the point where the efficiency is computed. Even so, the module to be simulated is made either of two trenches or even of one trench with two impervious lateral boundaries representing the symmetry planes of such system. Of this conceptual model, we have complied with the use of transversal section as a single plane of analysis, but we have considered the, mon the modeling of the whole system, not assuming it to be infinite, of infinite trenches, but we are interested because we are interested in the assessment of the efficiency at large depth. Since we wish to reduce the pore water pressure on a pore shaped slip surface, we need to combine this shape with the distribution of the pore water pressures resulting from the trench induced drainage. Therefore, we cannot only address the attention to the horizontal plane 
of the system of infinite branches. Using this, this approach, Kotecki and co authors have already shown that on the horizontal plane at large depth, the drop in pore water pressure caused by the system is not negligible and it is not uniform. Rather, it is of a necklace, necklace shape. This is favorable because where the slip surface is deepest, there is the maximum drop in the pore water pressure possible. Whereas when the drop reduces, the surface is less deep and therefore benefits from higher pore water pressure reduction at shallower depth. All this has been further investigated in this work using hydromechanical modeling, whereas previous authors have adopted only uh, hydraulic uncoupled modeling. With reference to the Pichot's law, such two-dimensional hydromechanical modeling have been carried out. With reference to the section in the top of the right-hand side, whose trace is reported in the left-hand side. This is the numerical model corresponding to such section. The model is homogeneously made by Pichot clay. The blue line represents the pre-existing shear band, uh, shear surface, along which we are willing to reduce the pore water pressures. The green clusters represent the coarse gravel soil, which is the material chosen to fill uh, uh, the, the drainage, uh, the deep drainage trench system. In this model, which is here zoomed, the effect of the drainage system in such 2D configuration is modeled by both introducing the drainage filling material with its own hydromechanical properties, but also by applying <coughs> an hydraulic condition at the bottom of the trenches, where the pore water pressure is imposed to be equal to the atmospheric one. Lateral boundaries are set to free drainage, whereas top boundaries are impervious. At the ground level, a transit boundary condition representing the soil vegetation atmosphere interaction is applied. The constitutive model, uh, the, mo the Marcolon constitutive model, is adopted uh, for, for both the pitchable clay and the gravel soil trench, whose, param whose parameters are reported in the table. In particular, please note, please note the saturated permeability value for the fissure clay being 3 times 10 to minus 9, and that of the gravel soil being 10 to minus 4 meter second. The partially saturated behavior has been taken into account for both those materials by implementing the soil water retention curve and the hydraulic conductivity function. At the top level, we have either applied the total monthly rainfall or the total daily rain rainfall or, the, or no rainfall. It is worth reminding that in such modeling, the total monthly rainfall is generally adopted in the literature. Obviously, the net daily rainfall would be closer to reality, including though the evapotranspiration flux to the calculation, as we will see later on. The results here reported correspond to the application of five years of weather as top boundary condition. The north rainfall boundary condition in green and the total monthly rainfall in red represent the bound of the pore water pressure reduction with time at all depth along the vertical line of symmetry. With the same geometrical configuration in the input param parameters as reported by Kotecki and co-authors, here a comparison in terms of hydraulic efficiency of drainage trench system is reported. In particular, the hydraulic efficiency resulting from the coupled hydromechanical analysis resulted to be double with respect to the one obtained by uh, uncoupled hydraulic analysis. The effect of a more realistic constitutive model has also been explored. In particular, the results of a more Coulomb model have been compared with results obtained when adopting the soft soil model, which is an hardening model with a more Coulomb ferrous surface on the dry side and a cam clay like hardening surface on the wet side. When adopting the soft soil model, peculiar attention has been paid to the numerical initialization of the model, trying to achieve the variation with depth of soil state and properties as recorded in situ. The initialization of the numerical model has been carried out by executing two drain, drain excavation phases, and only after the drainage course material, material has been implemented in the trenches. Here are reported the uh, results of the initialization with reference to a generical vertical in the model. In red are reported data at the end of the initialization phase when adopting the soft soil model. In blue, the in situ data, and in black, uh, the data uh, uh, related to the Morcolon model. The value of the void ratio in the center does not represent for both the Morcolon model and soft soil model a state variable. The only use of getting a variation of void ratio with depth is that by using the Taylor relation, it has been possible to link to such variation the variation of the saturated permeability with depth, which you may see in the plot in red, where in blue, in situ measurements by using the Marriott bottle, 
being carried out by Perdon in 2014 are reported. The variation of the OCR value with depth is, depth is well caught by the soft soil model as well as the young modulus with depth, whereas a constant value of young modulus was adopted for the monochrome model, averaging the in situ variation with depth. Here, the parameters of the Pichelo clay were modeled by using both the more Coulomb and the soft soil models are reported. This plot now shows how at different depths below the center of the system, here shown for the case with three trenches, there are differences in the prediction of the pore water pressure between the more Coulomb and the soft soil model. In particular, when using the more Coulomb soil law, the predicted piezometric heads reduction for zero flux at the ground surface is much less than when using the soft soil model. Accordingly, when using the more Coulomb constitutive model, the pore water pressure reduction at depth is higher when the soil, uh, soil vegetation atmosphere interaction, uh, sorry, uh, is accounted for, of course. Then, when putting zero flux, at the, um, uh, then uh, if compared, when putting zero flux at the ground sur surface. Conversely, when using the soft soil model, the different top boundary conditions of hybrid zero flux or net flux due to the slope vegetation atmosphere interaction appear not to impact significantly the, predict the predicted piezometric heads reduction. The reason lies in the way in which the different profile of the soil state and properties are implemented, holding for the analysis with the Morculon model and the soft soil model. Uh, since those influence differently the seepage domain for a different of boundary conditions. An even more important impact of the use of more realistic constitutive model is the record is the record for the distribution of the pore water pressure drops along the horizontal planes, because there is a higher gradient of the pore water pressure variation with X for the so uh, soft soil model than for the more Coulomb model. The neck laced curve representing the pore water pressure distribution is narrower around the axis of symmetry for the cases of the soft soil model than for the Morcolon model. Investigating now the, num the numerical prediction corresponding to different geometrical systems, one with three trenches and the other one with five trenches with time, you can see how the effect of the increased number of trenches applies. Such um, effects are major when adopting the soft soil model, as already said. And this leads me to the conclusion the impact of the pore water pressure drop with time by different transit boundary conditions applied to the ground surface has been described. The most accurate uh, modeling strategy to model the top boundary uh, implements the net daily rainfall, where instead of inputting the total daily rainfall, or the monthly uh, total rainfall result in the underestimation of the drainage induced for water pressure reduction. The impact of the modeling of implementing the in situ variability with depth of both the soil saturated permeability and stiffness has been reported, highlighting that for a detailed modeling of these features uh, um, uh, uh, and for a good uh, drainage induced seepage prediction, uh, those factors have to be uh, accounted for. The group effect detected by Cotecchia has been confirmed also by fully coupled hydromechanical analysis. It increases with both times and the, num and the number of trenches, irrespective of the constitutive model being used. However, such effect has been found to be higher when adopting the soft soil model, which can account, of course, for the variation of soil properties with their more accurate. As a future pre perspective, we are currently carrying out three-dimensional hydromechanical numerical analysis of such process, uh, implementing reliable constitutive model and a proper uh, soil um, vegetation atmosphere interaction by using uh, the net daily rainfall and a pre-existing shear band. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Tagaili. So because we are a bit late, we move directly to the second presentation. <laughs> Uh, if possible, try to stay within 15 minutes so that we are not too delayed for the, yes. the break and for the discussion. So I'll, I'll let you the floor for the next, uh, the next presentation. Yes, that will yes. be me again. Okay, uh, now in, uh, in the geological mechanical context, which I have referred to in the previous presentation, uh, that is location of a widespread weather in use landslide, another innovative strategy that is being tested to mitigate the landslide risk is the use of selected vegetation. 
The reason for this choice is the hypothesis that this measure may be more sustainable since it has to be set up at different sites. Obviously, its efficiency in mitigating landsliding has to be tested. That is why we are carrying out research on the effect of the, on the slope hydraulics of selected deep rooted vegetation of high transpiration capacity. In this presentation, I will briefly introduce how the interaction between the vegetation, the slope, and the atmosphere may be molded. And then I will present the results of a field test where selected deep rooted crop has been set up. We are addressing mainly the hydraulic function of the plants with the aim at reducing the pore water pressures in the slope down to large depth because of the transpiration capacity of the plants. When adopting selected vegetation, the mitigation may result not only from the transpiration, but also by the capacity of the plant to intercept water with its leaves and to modify the runoff rate. Another positive effect, which results from the, shed, uh, results from the shadowing effect provided by the vegetation, uh, uh, which reduces the, uh, the secretion cracking, that rather is found to be widespread and deep in the cover of these slopes. Um, such des desiccation cracking usually represents preferential flow path for the water, which is the infiltration of uh, the water slope. All this has been seen to be reduced when the selected vegetation is adopted. Here comes the framework of reference for us when interpreting and modeling the interaction between the slope, the slope of the vegetation and the atmosphere, hence the slope of vegetation atmosphere interaction. As reported by Elia and co-authors, when simulating this interaction, especially the crop scale, it is necessary to account for all the laws that intervene in the soil and therefore to carry out, to carry out a couple thermohydromechanical modeling in which all these laws are integrating at the same time, accounting for all several constitutive laws and parameters which are part of the laws. Furthermore, at the crop scale, to interpret and predict the effect of the vegetation, it is necessary to represent mathematically also the behavior of the plant in the crop, so in particular the transpiration phenomena and to, phenomenon. And to do so, it is useful to make reference to this physical model, which is actually quite dated, um, uh, and that is from uh, the atmospheric scientist sellers and co-authors. This model schematizes the interaction between the plant and the soil and the atmosphere by means of a potential resistance flux scheme. In particular, it is possible to represent the action of the vegetation, as well as both the soil and the atmosphere by means of resistances, which limit the fluxes of heat and vapor driven by gradients of temperature and relative humidity. You may notice that the, sens the sensible heat chain in the right-hand side, whereas on the left-hand side, the latent heat which is directly linked to the transpiration flux with reference to both canopy and groundwater. And it is also linked with the evaporation flux with reference to the soil surface. It is worth highlighting that also changes in temperature as associated with the sensible heat impact on the transpiration by means of the psychrometric law. The phenomenological and mathematical scheme just presented has been implemented by Professor Laura and co-authors in the FE code code Bright, developed at UPC in Barcelona. In this numerical implementation, all the resistances of the previous scheme are computed by equations which implement the constitutive properties and the features of both soil and the vegetation layer, as well as the atmospheric condition. Then a couple of thermohydromechanical modeling can be carried out. We are currently collaborating with Professor Bonat to model uh, numerically the crop test I will show you in a while. The site scale crop test has been located in the tow area of the Pichero landslide. The crop test being large about 2000 square meter has been realized by hydro seeding technique. The crop, uh, um, the crop test, some instruments and probes have, have been installed. In particular, capacity, water content probes up to 1.6 meter depth, electric piezometer set at 7 meters, and water potential and temperature probe have been installed both outside in the upslope area and inside the crop test. Moreover, inside the test site area, also a meteorological station has been placed. Down slope outside the vegetated area, a piezometric cell at 7 meters has been installed. 
Soil coloring and laboratory data resulted in this, uh, along this uh, section, resulted in this geologic, geotechnical section, which illustrates both the strata of different geotechnical properties and the location of samples subjected to different hydraulic and mechanical testing. Permeability coefficients have been measured in the laboratory by means of a permeameter, resulting in permeability coefficients about 5 times 10 to minus 9 meter second. And also in situ by using the Marriott bottle by Pedone, resulting in one order of magnitude higher permeability. The retention properties have been investigated by measuring suction with both high capacity tensiometer and filter paper technique. Despite differences in the grain science distribution curve, in particular with reference to sand and silt, fra and silt fractions, the soil on overall exhibit high retention capacity being as such due to the main layer composition of the matrix. In fact, the higher entry values have been, seen, have been seen to be at least of 700 kPa. The seeded selected crop is composed of leguminous crop, being of C3 cycle crop type, and the graminous crop, being of C4 cycle 1. This distinction is very relevant and is directly impact on the behavior of the vegetation. Differences among these two classes basically lie on the different structure of the leaf, which then result in a different biological cycle. It is worth mentioning that the difference in the leaf structure, as well as the ability of the C4 cycle crop to control the stomata, makes such plant able to retain water in its leaves when high temperature or high net radiation occur. As such, those plants are usually classified as evergreen. The climate monitoring over three years is here shown. The climate has been classified at, Pich at Pichola as Mediterranean subcontinental to continental, partly semi-arid to arid. As regards the soil state monitoring, here the temperature in the soil at one meter is reported both inside and outside the crop test area. As it could be expected, the vegetation area shows lower temperature with respect to the not vegetated one as well as slightly smaller fluctuations during the year. This is, of course, due to the shadow effect of the, that the vegetation is providing to the soil, as well as the effect of the proper thermal conducti conductivity of the vegetation layer, which acts as a sort of thermal filter. Same data applies to the temperature data at uh, 2.5 meters. With regard to the suction at one meter, it can be noticed that the suction value in the vegetated area are always higher than the corresponding outside and reach the maximum in summer 18 and during the whole period from summer 19 till December 20. Whereas outside, the uh, suction values fluctuate. This shows that inside the vegetated area, transpiration is acting the most, whereas outside, the soil state fluctuates with climate. I will refer to this period from October 19 to October 20 later on. At 2.5 meter depth in the vegetated area, suction are only slowly increasing, whereas outside they still fluctuate significantly because climate affects deeper strata more than uh, in the vegetated area. Uh, with reference to the period that I just shown here, the water content with depth from the ground level up to 1.6 meter up are plotted. The first curve regard October 19. Then we have December 19, which show an increase in water content in the vegetated area up to one meter, whereas only slight and very superficial changes in water content occur outside. Further on, in May 20, after a period in which the vegetation has been seen to develop in its life cycle, the transpiration flux inside the vegetated area has reduced the water content, whereas outside the vegetated area, the water content increases. In July 20, the water content inside the vegetated area is kept to very low values, whereas outside the water content reduces only in uh, the first meter and not in the whole depth interval. At the end, in October 20, there is a slight increase of the water content only in a very shallow soil cover, whereas outside the water content remains high down to 1.6 depth, meters depth. Data show that in the vegetated area, the water content reduction is larger down to the root depth, and there are no fluctuations, which instead are present and are chaotic outside, since the not vegetated area seems to be directly connected with the climate. The vegetation can be seen as such to act as a sort of filter which partially disconnects the weather from with the soil. 
by coupling now the in-situ measurements of suction and water content at one meter below ground level, it has been possible to deduce the in-situ water con soil water content curve. The brown line represents the water content of the undisturbed soil, which has been always adopted in the numerical modeling, with yellow and blue the drying and wetting data in the lab along the scanning curves. The brown dots represent the water content data monitored in situ, which are in good agreement with the lab ones for the intact soil, so outside the vegetated area. Instead, the green dots represent the retention data measured in situ inside the vegetated area, and the green line is the corresponding Bangenuten soil water retention curve on this new rhizosphere, let's say. You can see here the difference in the retention capacity of the vegetated clay soil, and uh, in this case, uh, it reduces uh, in the retention capacity due to roots. Correspondingly, by adopting the Moal and Van Denoctel model, it is possible to estimate the hydraulic conductivity function based um, for, for both inside and outside the vegetated area, uh, where the saturated permeabilities here reported for the two cases are preliminary results of in situ wealth permeability tests we have carried out. All the field data here reported will be, of course, implemented in the modeling of the crop test, which will be uh, carried out. Now, according to the field, the water retention curve, the previous water content profile results in the suction profiles here reported for the vegetated and the not vegetated area. You can see how the fluctuation in suction in the vegetated area are very much limited and uh, reduced by comparison in the not vegetated area, where they reach even one order of magnitude more. This obviously causes cracking in the not vegetated area confirming the disconnection that the selected vegetation determines between the climate and the ground below the roots. All these concepts uh, reflect the piezometric data at seven meters depth, where excluding the initial part of the plot where the vegetation was still growing, you can see from July 19 onwards that the piezometric heads outside the vegetated data are fluctuates, uh, are fluctuates. Uh, instead, those inside the vegetated area are only slowly reducing. This leads me to the conclusion that the research provides confidence about the possibility that a selected vegetation can mitigate the weather effect of, on the soil state at depth in the slope. The data overall show that the water retention curve of the vegetated clay is indicative of a lower retention capacity with respect to the clay without roots that the selected vegetation reduces significantly the water content in the soil, and it is expected with time to mitigate the pore water pressure at depth along the piezometers. Uh, the corresponding suction do not fluctuate in a large range in the vegetated area because of the newly acquired water retention of the top soil. The controlled rhizosphere generated by uh, selected uh, vegetation appears to disconnect the deeper uh, slope strata from the weather action. Of course, these are just preliminary findings and a lot of work is still required to interpret and model the data. And of course, the research is still going on. Okay, thank you very much, Vito. Thanks for taking the time. Sorry for having uh, stressed you a bit for, uh, for the time. You no perfectly stood in time. You had two very nice and interesting presentations. So we are going through the, to have the break now because I uh, think even if we are a bit late, we need the break for the people. Uh, we come back in 10 minutes for the discussion. And that discussion will be managed by Federica Cotecha. Federica, you're, you're still here? Or you will be here? Yes, I am. I am. <laughs> okay. So we, I, I need, we, we need the ten minutes of break for for all the yes. people. Uh, I do hope that the different speaker will be will join the, the discussion time, uh, and that the five speaker as well will attend this uh, this this period. So have a good break and uh, see you in ten minutes. And thank for you, Fereika, uh, 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 to manage this. Uh, yes, this thank you, thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. See you in ten minutes.
No, professore. No,
Ciao, Eric. Ciao, ciao. Comment vas-tu? Bien, et toi? Bien, bien, bien. Bien. Pas de problème, ça me fait plaisir de te voir. <rire> Same here. <rire> on, se, on se rencontre depuis, je pense, euh, plusieurs ans. Hein? Oula, oula, ça fait plus, oui. Ouais, ça fait beaucoup de temps. P probablement la dernière fois a été à Salerne, non? à l'occasion de la RAM. Oui. Donc ouais. peut-être 2017 ou 2018. Oui, oui. Ben, il, il va falloir qu'on arrête euh, tout le confinement et les vidéos pour voir un petit peu les gens en direct. Ce sera, <rire> ce sera quand même oui. mieux. Quoi. Oui, <rire> je, trouve, je trouve très intéressant cette approche, l'approche avec les vidéos, etc. Parce que ça donne beaucoup de, plus de possibilités, surtout euh, aux gens qui n'ont pas d'agents et choses comme ça. C'est clair. C'est eh, clair. À mon avis, dans le, le futur, la formule meilleure sera le mixte. Oui. En présence et à distance. Exactement. Il faudra faire des, des, des rooms avec des, des, des grands écrans pour que les gens puissent suivre à distance également. Ah oui, 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 oui. Et en plus, je, je pense à notre comité. Je, je suis en train de faire une autre proposition. Oui. Ah, tu, dois, tu dois travailler avec moi. Hein? Mais ça, je suis d'accord. <rire> oui, je suis, je, je suis en train de penser à quelque, quelque chose d'intéressant à faire à travers le comité. Je veux le communiquer dans la prochaine semaine. Si, si je maintiens ma, ma, ma proposition, mon idée. Ben si, C'est un problème pour un homme qui est à la retraite comme moi. Hein. Tu es à la retraite, toi Moi qui suis à la retraite depuis, depuis un an et demi. Normalement, ça ne devrait pas être toléré, ça. Hein. <rire> Mais je n'aime je, je, je pas la retraite. Ouais, je comprends, oui. J'adore mon travail, donc ça c'est le problème. Ok, uh, maybe we can move uh, forward. Federica, I see you are already connected. I, I do hope you have a nice coffee. <laughs> yes, thank you, Eric. So I think we can start with the discussion. Yes, I, I think we, we have. I, I let you, of course, managing the discussion. Uh, we have. Uh, Almost questions. half an hour. Yes, we have a, a lot of questions. Uh, already questions were uh, uh, answered. So I, I let you manage in this. I just yes, would, just. Would, uh, yeah, just okay. would like you to ask to, to Giuseppe Scarpelli, uh, which is the next speaker, to be a bit patient because we will be a bit delayed. But thanks for him for, for being patient. I do hope all the speakers are here. And uh, Federica, I let you the, the floor for managing yes, the discussion. A brief, um, so a brief uh, resume uh, summary. I mean, um, we have listened to uh, several interesting presentations uh, about um, in the first part about uh, how uh, in new development and projects it is made be difficult to protect the structures uh, from uh, uh, unstable slopes uh, and the sliding and uh, therefore how the uh, opera should be conceived in light of the safeguard of the territory through a diagnosis and characterization of the uh, land sliding prior to the design of the opera and of the structures. Uh, and probably how the codes, uh, the national codes should recognize uh, more than uh, is done at present, uh, the difficulty of uh, diagnosing the instability processes uh, and uh, the effects of their interaction with uh, uh, the new uh, built uh, construction projects. Uh, um, and probably this is not the case yet because not much space is delivered to this part in the design uh, according to the codes. Uh, we have uh, listened to this with regard to tunnels in the presentations of Professor Jovicis and Professor Picarelli and with regard to excavations in urban area uh, from Professor Kaluk. And then a few, just two examples of uh, remedial measures for the mitigation of landslide risk um, according again to an approach complying with the uh, in deep interpretation of the and diagnosis of the lens lighting before the choice of the um, mitigation measure and uh, the 
um, analysis of the uh, less sliding uh, prior to the uh, analysis of the effects of the mitigation measure. Then uh, you see, um, I'm very glad to see that there are several questions. Uh, the first is uh, uh, from Roberto Vassallo to uh, Dr. Kaliuk. Uh, I read it. Uh, are time effects significant for the soils object of your presentations? I mean, unrained conditions uh, shortly after construction and excavation, time necessary for drainage systems to reach their final effectiveness. Do these represent a relevant aspect to consider? Please, uh, uh, Professor Kaluk, if you can uh, provide the answer. Thank you for questions. Uh... Um, we uh, preparing uh, uh, temporary drainage systems uh, uh, to stop the slope deformations uh, before uh, continue the next stage of a garage complex. Um, more detailed, uh, um, yeah. I. Charlie, you have uh, your audio on. <laughs> okay. Uh, if, if, um, to me, uh, to demonstrate, me need uh, additional slides uh, now um, to big regret. Uh, no preparing with slides with. Uh, which represents with temporary drainage systems for stopped with deformations. Excuse me, if you need, I send you by mail. Okay, uh, thank you for your reply, uh, Professor Kaluk. I, if I, if I try to go uh, in sequence uh, from, through the authors, there is um, <clears throat> Um, a question, uh, uh, various questions to Professor Jovicic. <clears throat> um, here I find uh, one, one second. Um, I think there is a, a second question to Jovicic from Nunzio Losacco. Um, is it right? Um, the question, I, I had difficulty in reading, sorry. Okay. Uh, no, I, I suppose that uh, your Voikan Jovic has already replied to Nunzio Losacco. Did you, yeah. Voikan? Yeah, I found this very funny that uh, you know, questions are raining while some other uh, presentations are also ongoing. So it's very difficult to to connect to both would things. You, uh, would you very quickly uh, provide uh, well, the reply I, I so that all I, the audience I, can listen? Yeah, to I tried to answer about five to six questions uh, <laughs> so far. And I don't know how it's being shared by the by the others, but uh, several there are a few questions uh, about the use of drainage in combination with the, with the portals. Yes. And uh, obviously, <clears throat> there was a good uh, question by um, by Nuncio Losako, who uh, essentially is a, affirming that idea in a general sense. Um, and in in our case, it was it was obvious thing to do because it was part of the civil works just to do the excavation uh, galleries, the the entrance galleries, and it was part of the of the drainage system that this structure would normally have already. So we simply extend it because we knew that this will be very beneficial for the stability of the slope. Um, so, and his question was even further uh, more smart in a sense, can the tunnels be used as, um, as a measure to stabilize uh, the conditions on the on the roots of the motorways in this sense. And I think this is a very interesting idea and the answer is uh, certainly yes, but they have to be designed in a very smart way. Um, 
and that is not always possible as, as Professor Piccarelli showed that the tunnels are very vulnerable structures to the, to the landslide movements. And uh, this is, I had some questions from, uh, for, for Professor Piccarelli in that effect, but maybe I should answer my questions first. Okay. Thank you, Voikan. Uh, there is a question to Professor Piccarelli from Professor Scarpelli. Uh, Luciano, thank you for the presentation of an interesting example of tunnel landslide interaction. In which way the bedding orientation in the slope can influence your results? And what happens if the patterns of discontinuities are more complex as it generally happens in uh, structurally complex formations? Please, Luciano. Yeah, my answer is very short. No influence of bedding. Because I have uh, very short in my presentation regarding this, the properties, the characteristics of the materials involved in the landslide because due to the lack of time. So I have, I have been very short. This, uh, this formation is uh, a B2, B3 formation according to the classification of structurally complex soils by ESU 1967. This means for people who, who, who do not know this uh, classification, which is uh, typical for the Italian materials, is a completely disarranged formation. So not bedding planes, the, the material is completely disarranged. These are tectonized clay shells, shell, clay shell in which the discontinuities consist of minor shears with the, the uh, spacing of a few centimeters, one from the other. And uh, uh, slip major shears, I mean slip surfaces, which are induced by tectonism or by slope movements, which present uh, a completely variable direction in the mass uh, due to the effect of tectonism or to the effect of uh, slope movements. So we cannot rationalize the problem. Uh, we have no bedding with a clear orientation and so on. The mass should be considered as an homogeneous mass, even though with characteristics which depends on the, its complexity. I hope that to have been clear. Yes, very clear. So Scarpelli knows very well this formation. So I assume that the modeling uh, complied with the behavior of a representative element volume that whose size you decided uh, a priori because of the variability yeah. of the fissuring. Yeah, we know very, very, you, we know very, Italian, we know very well this problem. We have to, to test uh, big samples in order to include in these in this samples all the structural features, I mean, mean, mean uh, uh, minor shears, uh, in order to give to the material a characterization which represents the overall behavior of the mass, which depends in turn on the minor shears and on the characteristic of the single elements between the minor shears, in some way, sort of sand, uh, whose uh, contact uh, are governed by the minor shears, so by a very low friction angle. There is another question to Professor Piccarelli by Nunzio Lusacco. Thank you for the very clear presentation on such an interesting topic. In slide nine, the displacement vectors caused by the approaching excavation are almost perpendicular to those occurring when the tunnel phase has advanced further. Have you got an idea on how much those longitudinal displacements would be if the landslide was not active? In other words, is it possible that uh, those displacements directed towards the tunnel axis are actually unrelated to the instability of the soil mass and only due to the tunnel excavation? No, I don't think so. I have shown a series of readings. So we have the vec displacement vectors with, whose direction changes with the tunneling works. We have um, 
displacement vectors which are directed in the direction of uh, the slope, which are of course influenced by the lens light. And at a given time, the, the spectrum vectors changes abruptly. And that time is the moment at which the excavation works uh, reach the point which is the closest one to the position of the inclinometer. So the change in direction is clearly related to the excavation works. And I have another experience about this point regarding a pipeline, a gas pipeline within an active lens light. It was a very dangerous situations because the movement of the active lens lights could give rise to explosion, to rupture of the gas pipeline and explosion. So the, the pipeline was, the soil around the pipeline was excavated in order to intervene on the pipeline. At that moment, when the excavation uh, put to, to light the, the pipeline, at that moment, the displacement vector changes immediately in the direction of the trench around the pipeline. This is, has been a very interesting uh, uh, experience which uh, couples with the experience we have made with another large pipe, the tunnel that we have investigated in the Apennines. Thank you, Luciano. Now here we come to some questions to Dr. Tagarelli. There is a question from uh, Professor Caffaro. Uh, although soft soil model allows you to take into account the porosity variation with depth, you employ the model for the soil hydraulic equations implying a constant saturated permeability up to the entry value. This is not properly consistent for clays since shrinkage under drying is not negligible and permeability is changing even for the saturated conditions. Did you manage this aspect of the simulation? First of all, thank to Professor Caffaro for the question. I completely agree with uh, what uh, he reported in the question. Uh, uh, let's if see, you let's... could speak louder. Yes, uh, I, I would say that unfortunately, um, within the Vangelukten model, uh, Vangelukten Wallen model, as implemented in Plaxis, uh, we are not able to, uh, let's say, uh, explicitly take into account for such laboratory evidence. Um, for example, double porosity water retention curve could be implemented, uh, and I, I think that that could be uh, for sure useful uh, because this could uh, help uh, in trying to model what uh, Professor Caffaro was pointing out. Uh, however, I would uh, uh, mention also that a certain uh, uh, coupling effect uh, about this issue is caused by the coupling strategy we have adopted. Uh, in particular, using the Bishop effective stress, uh, um, an increase in suction, uh, keeping, however, the material below the air entry value, causes uh, the soil skeleton to, uh, let's say, uh, shrinkage a lot. And if I increase suction, then there is a bit of shrinkage of the, uh, um, of the material. Uh, as such, uh, it changes uh, its void ratio. However, this, uh, this, uh, this coupling is clearly hiding inside the definition of the isotrope, of the degree of saturation which is, of course, the water content times the porosity. So uh, let's say, um, in conclusion, I would say that this issue is uh, partially taken into account because uh, before the higher entry value, a certain uh, stiffness of the material is implemented. Uh, but since we also have uh, very often uh, to deal with fissuring, uh, maybe a dual porosity water retention curve uh, could, uh, could uh, help uh, in uh, in accounting directly for this, uh, for this uh, aspect. Still with regard to the drainage, uh, the drainage trenches, yes. um, there is a question from Professor Di Maio to Vito Tagarelli uh, asking if you did investigate uh, the influence on the system effectiveness of the hydraulic conductivity in the slip zone, which is different from that of the landslide. Uh, thank Please. you, Professor Di, Di Maio, for the questions. Uh, I would also thank her for uh, all the relevant references she brought on the drainage process that 
I have read the end uh, 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 No, unfortunately, no, in the sense that uh, she gave uh, yesterday or the day before a very, can, can you hear me? Yes. A very, yes. Uh, a very uh, interesting presentation reporting uh, uh, such uh, uh, data uh, regarding the hydraulic conductivity of the sleep circuits, which has been seen to uh, be higher than uh, the corresponding parent material, let's say. And uh, no, we did not uh, implement such uh, uh, feature inside the model, but we assume, uh, let's say, in a way that this would still uh, um, help in trying to reach higher hydraulic efficiencies in uh, uh, less time, let's say. So this, of course, would speed up the drainage induced process. So uh, let's say, uh, in, in a way, we are uh, computing uh, uh, hydraulic efficiencies, with, which are the minimum that we could get, since uh, uh, in slip surfaces, uh, we could say that hydraulic uh, conductivity is a bit higher. So thank you for the question. Thank you, Vito. Uh, another question to uh, Professor Kaliuk from uh, Professor Gaetano Elia. Um, could um, you please clarify if uh, this concerns your second presentation? Uh, could you please clarify if the retaining wall collapse shown in, uh, in your presentation and in the paper is related to a global slope stability problem or instead to a wrong original design of the structure itself with respect to the collapse limit states? Okay, uh, thank you for question. Um, you know, if you conducted um, building works on a slope, uh, you must um, very accuracy controlled with all operation works. Uh, what does it mean? It means that if you excavate some ground from the slope, you must uh, to conduct some measures for stabilized with um, ejected um, area. So you must uh, organize some drainage if need. You must um, um, some uh, piles uh, incline anchors for and another measures for stabilized with area and the uh, initial initial slide uh, with slight area uh, as i say in my report was stabilized some drainage system and so on but after um, some uh, conducted uh, building works on this slide uh, it uh, stayed uh, non-stable is uh, we may conclude that um, project uh, for organize with um, building works um, uh, was wrong and during this mistake uh, after excavation ground uh, in this building area uh, this stabilize in, in previous uh, stabilized slide uh, move to unstable stage, uh, as I demonstrate in my uh, presentations. And uh, we may conclude uh, the first uh, design project uh, may be wrong. And in my final slide, um, my colleagues with me um, proposed uh, some recommendations to correct with firstly design project. Okay, thank you, thank you, Dr. Kaliuk. Uh, there is another question to uh, Dr. Tagarelli uh, from Professor Yosifovsky. Uh, I congratulate uh, you for the nice work. I am interested to hear about your experience using CodeBright. Did you have difficulties? to calibrate the model, and how did you do it? Okay, thank you, Professor Yosifoski, for, for the congratulations for the question. Uh, we met in Skopje in Bari, so thanks. Um, uh, at the moment, I have uh, only carried out uh, one-dimensional thermo-hydraulic uh, coupled modeling. 
using Code Bright during my PhD. Um, such modeling has been carried out only uh, in a first uh, say stage with reference to the not vegetated area. So I tried to model the vertical outside the vegetated area with uh, uh, Code Bright. Uh, also, because uh, at that time, uh, two years ago, the implementation of the whole uh, plant soil atmosphere scheme uh, I um, reported in the presentation uh, was not implemented. Uh, it has been uh, uh, only recently implemented inside and tested also inside the copyright code. Uh, I would say that I had no problem at all as regard in the, in the modeling as regard the thermal part. Uh, in fact, uh, since uh, the, the first uh, modelings uh, I, I did, I, ju I just had to give as input literature data of the thermal behavior of the soil, so let's say thermal conductivity of the, of the soil, thermal conductivity of the water, the thermal conductivity of the vapor and so on. And I was uh, um, uh, able to catch the temperature variation with time in the soil at different depth as monitored from the crop test I presented. So the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 in the thermohydraulic modeling, the thermal part was really uh, successful from the beginning. As regards the hydraulic side, uh, yes, uh, we had some issues at the beginning, but then uh, uh, we managed to solve some uh, incons inconsistencies that we get between numerical prediction and uh, um, uh, monitoring data, um, uh, just changing uh, a bit the, the, the permeability uh, coefficients because I uh, I remember that in the code bright, the user has to give as input not the, not, not the hydraulic conductivity of the saturated permeability as we usually do, but the intrinsic permeability within the code Zeni uh, model. So maybe uh, this could be the, you know, the tricky, the tricky. I, I, I may add to, to, to this reply with a, a parallel experience uh, carried out uh, in, always in collaboration with Jean Bonnat on the Picholo slope, uh, uh, comparing the predictions of Code Bright uh, um, with respect to uncoupled hydraulic analysis. Uh, you know that Code Bright uh, doesn't need uh, a net flux at the top boundary as input, but you can input directly the climatic uh, variables and uh, the output is the uh, evaporation rate. Um, and uh, the comparison was uh, successful. Uh, although there were some mesh dependencies to be solved, but so far the thermohydraulic uh, part of Code Bright is working. Uh, there is, I think that uh, there is a development for the thermohydromechanical with the vegetation that is under under work at the at the moment. May I ask, maybe Voika? I don't know if we have finished or there is a possible. Yeah. No, because I, I don't know how to write the question, so I have a yes. <laughs> sorry, but I, I would have a, a direct question to Professor uh, Dovicic. Uh, I would say it's in terms of decision making. You you were saying at the beginning of your presentation that, uh, of course, where to put the tunnel, where to put the, the road is not defined at the beginning by technical consideration, but by, by, by uh, I would say political and socio-economical consideration. Uh, you decided, uh, I would say, based on technical consideration to elongate the, two, the tunnels in the two uh, uh, north and south. And you say that uh, at the beginning you didn't want it to, to take the initial project because it could, uh, I would say, trigger the landslide, the big landslide, and then it would be too expensive to stabilize the landslide. But when you elongate the tunnel in both parts, you, you, you have extra cost. So did you have a feedback analysis to know whether it was less expensive to elongate the tunnel because it, it has extra costs, and to stabilize the landslide if you were uh, considering the initial project. Yes, thank you for that question. I mean, uh, on this particular project, uh, I have that freedom to, to apply this uh, geotechnical solution that I thought were appropriate. 
Uh, and obviously the price for the different solutions came into into play because the the client didn't want to pay for for something that is not uh, uh, appropriate or it may be just uh, uh, one of the solutions that are more expensive but in this case uh, I mean uh, the the first solution was based on relatively simple site investigation. I mean, they should have spotted the landslides of this size, but they, they didn't because this is a typical situation when you have the client at the beginning of the project <clears throat> when he doesn't pay enough money for site investigation. And once uh, the, the route of the motorway is fully developed, then the next stage of it uh, shows uh, such elements. Uh, on this particular case, it was not just the uh, uh, expense of the tunnel construction that will be elongated here, but uh, what was uh, meant also is the maintenance costs. Mm -hmm. uh, to maintain the five, uh, 50 meter high uh, cut, the permanent cut uh, at the root of the motorway with uh, probably active anchors that had, that had to be uh, uh, checked and replaced after a while and so on, I mean, in the long term, the tunnel was uh, definitely a cheaper solution. And I argumented that to the client. Uh, he didn't, also the other moment was that the risk analysis. I mean, if we prove that we are not going to trigger any landslides, but these solutions, he was much happier with that uh, than to have the landslide and then to try to deal with it. And as we know, I mean, the whole motorway is once it's uh, laid out completely, it's like a casting stone. Whatever you do with it, you can't change the route. And then you have a problem and then you have a domino effect. And if you have part of the route that is not accessible because of the landslide that you don't know how going to, to remediate, then everything stops and the costs are enormous. Mm -hmm. So considering those two aspects, I think they took the right decision and allocated the tunnel. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody. I think we should go to pass to this next session. For uh, every question, you can. Uh, I just want to remind that you can uh, talk, uh, chat, and meet to each other directly on the platform until tonight. So, if you want to con continue your discussion, you can do it also on the platform. Okay. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Federica, for your. Thank you. Thank you to you all. <laughs> okay. So we move forward for the next. We have to change a link, I guess, no?